this is course introduction and we are um, we uh, this class is called uh, analog electronics and integrated circuits I think I mentioned already that we really don't do all that much with integrated circuits uh, we do uh, build circuits but not just we haven't we aren't really touching on the topics of how to put them directly into silicon and make them into an integrated slab of silicon that, that does all these fantastic things. Um, the analog electronics is also kind of uh, not really telling the whole story. Uh, if you um, if you actually looked into the content of the class. The name should actually be, hey, let's make an op amp. Because really, that's all we do. The entire quarter is um, about how to make an op amp. So, so why is that? Why op amps? Why do we have a whole quarter just on op amps? Um, when there's all these other analog circuits, you know, in analog circuits, there's filters, amplifiers, which we are building. There's oscillators. There's analog comparators. Uh, there's phase frequency detectors. If you've if you've done anything with uh, radios uh, or receiving signals, um, whenever if you have a PLL, something that needs to synchronize a clock, um, sample and holds, DC DC converters, adders. Um, there's analog adders and multipliers as well as the digital ones, voltage regulators. There's all of these different kind of analog circuits. Why are we only doing op amps? I'm sorry about this. Uh, with so many circuits, why do we only do op amps? Because for many of them, their best version has an op amp at their core. So let's look at, uh, if you remember the one of the uh, last videos uh, when we were talking about why um, I'm going to talk a lot about MOSFETs this quarter. Uh, there was a picture of uh, chips, kind of a, a random Kind of representative chip from 20, 30, 40 years ago, um, for more than 20, um, 30, 40, 50 years ago, and it had uh, about you know something like half analog, half digital, or even three quarters analog, one quarter digital. But these days, uh, the majority of the chip is digital, and you can go back and watch that video to, to try to understand why. Um, but there's still that little analog part. And what that analog part does is it interacts with the actual world because the world is analog. So let's look at a little radio system here. Here's the transmitter. It's sending the signal over to a receiver. And right uh, at the receiver, there's an antenna. That stuff stuck to the antenna, the circuitry stuck to the antenna is probably analog. And then it goes to an analog to digital converter, and then it's all digital after that. But let, let's see, let's see what you might need on that uh, receiving side of um, a chip. So um, if you have something that's being transmitted off an antenna, you know we've got our signal here. Uh, what happens is there's a whole bunch of noise out there. You know when you're talking on your cell phone. Everybody else in the world doesn't stop talking on theirs or, or stop, you know, um, you know, doing whatever they are doing with their wireless bandwidth. Um, so that all those other signals that are being sent, all the FM radio stations and AM radio stations and all that, um, that adds noise to your signal. So your original signal looked kind of nice, but now once it goes through all this noise, now the receiving antenna sees noise, and then also as uh, electromagnetic waves travel through the air, they get smaller. So what you originally had was this signal, but what the receiver gets is this signal. And you kind of have to, um, all the hardware now on chips, um, not all the, I'm overstating, uh, a lot of the cases where there's analog circuitry on a chip, it's to take this signal and get the original signal back. So let's see how that might be done. Um, I'll give you a couple of seconds here to think about what you might want to do to the signal to get the original signal back. And um, here's your couple of seconds. Um, 
these this bumpy stuff here is uh, higher frequency signals the way I drew it. It could be lower frequency signals too. But uh, so first you want to filter that. And then also since the amplitudes shrunk a lot, you have to amplify it back up. So if you receive a signal, then you probably have to filter it. That's analog. You can do it in digital also. Um, and then you want to amplify it. And then um, you do this thing called mixing, which I, I may talk about in a, a week or so, depending on um, whether we're going to mess with like massive LT spice simulations or not. Um, but yeah, uh, you have an oscillator here and it gets mixed. Um, when you multiply the incoming signal with uh, the, the uh, let's just call it a center frequency. That's not really uh, accurate um, nomenclature there, but uh, that center frequency, what you get back is um, a shifted signal by frequency. Um, yeah, really can't uh, talk more about that um, without kind of explaining what a mixer does, but just believe now that you take your in incoming signal and you mix it with a, uh, an, another, uh, frequent, another frequency, and that frequency gets subtracted from this signal. You can see in this cosine alpha minus beta uh, and comes out uh, as a lower frequency signal. So you mix that, and then um, you have to turn it into digital because now you've got it filtered and amplified. So you've got your original signal back, and right here you're, you're shifting the signal down. Now you analog to digital convert it so you can send it off to your digital processing block. So this is DSP, um, dig digital signal processing block here. Um, and the, the reason why I'm showing you this part is you say, well, um, hey, look at this. I, I only have one amplifier in this, and we we're spending an entire quarter on op amps. Why do we spend so much time on that? Let's look at this. Let's actually build this. Let's actually build this thing. Um, we could mix it first also. Uh, the amplifier and the filter, they can kind of go in, in either direction. Doing the mixer first then kind of also shifts down the noise, so um, probably, probably filter first is... Possibly a better uh, amplifier or filter first is, is probably a better thing to do. Okay, so if you look at that, um, let's see, uh, to make an oscillator, this is one type of oscillator um, that, that you'll see, um, also in C in 409. And this gives you a constant sine wave. And so now we have our mixer, but you have to multiply this signal with the incoming signal. So um, this is a multiplication signal here um, that takes the input and multiplies it with, with this signal right here um, and gives you and does this math for you. So you've got uh, two sine waves multiplied by each other and you get uh, do this math. Okay. And then so now you've got these, you've got the oscillator and you've got the mixer done. I need a filter. You say, well, filters, do you really do those in amplifiers? Yes, you do. It gives, you can have control of um, the bandwidth. Uh, you get um, the, you know, how quickly the, the amplitude drops off. You have a, a lot of control when you build a filter with uh, an operational amplifier. Okay, and so then we have uh, another amplification here. So I'll just do a, a simple non-inverting op amp that you've seen in 211 and then to a, a detector is um, often built with a comparator and uh, or a rectifier here sorry we're rectifying and then we're amplifying and sending out to the speaker and if you look at this whole design here um, that original design that high level design it only had one amplifier in it but when you build the entire audio build the entire receiver one two three four five six seven eight for a super simple um, receiver you, you're using that many um, um, op amps two four 
five, six, eight, eight op-amps. Yeah. So um, when you look at kind of the core of a lot of circuits out there, at their core, they have an op-amp. So when you, when you build an op-amp in this class, you're actually uh, building the most complicated parts of each one of these um, circuits, the filter, the amplifier, the comparator, the rectifier, the oscillator. All those have an op-amp at their core. Um, and um, never mind this. Um, uh, but the other reasons why we do op-amp, um, op-amps, a lot of the topics that come up with op-amps you see in other analog circuits. So even though we're specifically learning about op-amps in this class, um, the uh, the, we'll be covering a lot of topics that um, help you building other analog circuits. And again, those analog circuits that we mentioned are all of those. So what you learn when you're building an, uh, an op amp will help you build um, these blocks too if, you, when, if and when you uh, end up building them.